Good morning, everyone. My name is John Higgins. Welcome to another Sal St. George show. If you've been here before, it's always a pleasure to see you. Welcome back. If you're new to our programs, welcome to the party. This is how we start our week. Every Monday morning, we celebrate entertainment's leaders, legends, and icons. This morning, certainly no exception. We are taking a virtual road trip to the Rosemary Clooney House in Augusta, Kentucky, to visit with our friend Heather French Henry, Miss America 2000, for a presentation on the centennial of the Miss America pageant, 100 years of Miss America. We'll also be joined by Miss French Henry's brother, Jameson, who will be manning the camera. So I wanna say thank you to both of them. Please, everyone else, make sure to keep your camera and microphone off throughout today's program so we can stay focused on it. And if you have any questions here on Zoom or on Facebook, put them in the chat. I'll make sure to forward them to Sal. That way we can uh, address whatever questions you might have. And if you'd like, uh, hop in the chat, let us know where you're joining us from. Next weekend, I do wanna let you know we've got a big program coming up. Dal, uh, Saren and <laughs> Dal, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get it right. It's so exciting. Sal and Darren are heading for our first real live road trip, upstate New York for the It's a Wonderful Life Festival. So they are going to be meeting people involved in the festival, people involved in the movies. They're gonna be interviewing people. There will be a uh, lecture during the weekend. And then on Monday, Sal will be interviewing Carolyn Grimes, AKA Zuzu from It's a Wonderful Life. So we're really excited about that as you can tell. Anyway, for this week, I wanna say thank you to Cassandra St. George, who is behind the scenes and making sure everything runs smoothly. And without any further ado, let's welcome the man of the hour, Sal St. George. Sal, are you there? Good morning, everybody, and good morning, John. Good morning, Cassandra. And I'm glad everybody's here today because I can't wait to get into this house. Let's not even wait a second. Uh, we'll talk more about the It's a Wonderful Life Festival in a few minutes uh, at the end of the program uh, to let you know what we're doing. But uh, let's get Heather in here. Uh, good friend, Heather. Let's uh, open her up and get her on, on site. Is she there? There she, oh, that's not Heather. <laughs> Heather, what happened? <laughs> Hello, Jameson. <laughs> Let's switch you around here. Okay, there we go. There we go. You got a great <laughs> up close glimpse yeah. of Jameson. That's my younger brother who actually was at Miss America when I won. And he actually judged a couple of Miss America preliminaries. Probably one of the youngest judges in our history of our organization. I think his first appearance as a judge was at 15. So he knows more about Miss America than most contestants know about Miss America. <laughs> And Heather, we were talking briefly before, and uh, it's been a year since we've met you. It's been such a pleasure getting to know this side of the Miss America pageant. You know, we've seen it on TV for years, but this is this is a, a, a living, breathing entity. And uh, you are right behind it, uh, pushing all of these great stories and keeping them alive. You know, we do try, you know, all of the Miss Americas that live throughout the country, we all still maintain a very active schedule, traveling, talking about our own initiatives, our platforms that we had as Miss America. Mine was taking care of military veterans, which led to a your career taking care of veterans, but right here at the Rosemary Clooney House, now we're talking about the history of the organization. And now that we're celebrating our centennial birthday, 100 glorious years of the Miss America Scholarship Organization, it's really neat to be able to talk about some of the costumes and the evening gowns and some tidbits of history that you may not know. And how did this come about? Whose idea was it to put this uh, exhibit together? Well, of course, as you have toured the White Christmas exhibit at the Rosemary Clooney House before, we have had a long passion of historic preservation. And it, it really became apparent a few years ago. I was talking to some of my older Miss America sisters who had lost several of their artifacts. One of them lost a storage unit crown and gowns in it. And so it just became apparent that since we were already preserving costume collections, that the Rosemary Clooney House, specifically the Henry family and myself as curator, should really take this upon ourselves to be able to collect 
the Miss America artifacts that may in the future be lost in, in translation from family member to family member. So we started this a couple of years ago and we had done a preliminary, a much smaller version with you a year ago. And now today we are actually filling three rooms of the Rosemary Clooney house. So we have grown this collection substantially since the last time we spoke. Well, let's get started. All right, so we are here in what was Rosemary's uh, living room and really what is traditionally the white Christmas room at the Rosemary Clooney house. This is a house she purchased in 1980 to be close to Nick and Nina and George, yes, the famous George Clooney and his sister Ada. And she used to entertain a lot. So we created this as the white Christmas room, which now has been transformed into the beginning of our Miss America exhibit. So I'm going to walk you over to this wonderful case. We went in chronological order so people could get a real sense of not only the fashion trends that change, but the historical aspect of Miss America. So right here in this case, we begin with Miss America 1933, Marion Bergeron. Unfortunately, Marion is no longer with us, but during my year of Miss America, during 2000, Marion was a living Miss America. She was from New Haven, Connecticut. She lived in Dayton, Ohio at the time. And she and I got a chance to do a People Magazine shoot together because Marion actually had her crown stolen the day after she won Miss America at the ripe old 15. And so for decades, Marion went without a Miss America crown. So in the year 2000, People Magazine wanted to catch up with all the living Miss Americas. And I got a great chance to represent Marion Bergeron during this People Magazine shoot, which happened in Cincinnati, Ohio. I got a chance to represent her with a brand new Miss America crown. Now, Marion and her family have been so wonderful. They came down just the other day and they actually loaned us several artifacts. We have her 1933 Miss Connecticut vase right here, which, yep, has some age on it, but looks super fantastic. Her photo from when she won Miss America, and then her beautiful beaded, very heavy gown that she wore at the 75th anniversary of Miss America in 1996 when Heather Whitestone won Miss America. She was our first profoundly deaf Miss America and still is very active to this day. Could we get and, a little closer to the uh, gowns so that our guests can see? Absolutely. Because these so, are beautifully made. Yeah, they are beautifully made. And this really, it has a beautiful open cow neck back. And Marion was in fantastic shape all of her life. She had the most <clears throat> beautiful set of legs you'd ever seen on a gal. So <laughs> then in the same case, we had Joe Carol Dennison, who just until a few weeks ago was our oldest living Miss America. And she was 97 years old. I found her two years ago when I was researching for this project because being a curator means you're investigating a lot, right? You're doing a lot of research. And I had no idea that Joe Carroll was actually still alive. So she had not been involved for over 50 years with the organization because she had a life on the West Coast um, that took her in different directions. She actually was married to Phil Silver uh, for five years. She was in the movie business for several years. And she, I found her through a news article that was talking about her in the present tense. So I actually got a hold of the reporter. I literally phone called her and said, hey, this is going to be the strangest conversation you will have all day long. But I'm a former Miss America and I'm looking to contact the Miss America 1942 that you interviewed for your article. And she was so gracious to connect Joe Carroll and I together. And that started this wonderful friendship. And she actually sent us her original 1942 trophy, which you can see is quite tall. It is about three and a half feet tall. And it undergoes some restoration. And we've talked about this before in the museum with do you conserve and preserve things or do you restore things? And so we actually took it upon ourselves with a couple of our experts to restore the trophy as much as possible to its original state. We did keep the original age patina on the metal pieces, but there were several broken pieces that actually had to be uh, fixed. And then she gave us her original Miss America 1942 sash, which is actually a hand painted sash and then her preliminary sashes as well. And then behind you is one of the iconic Miss America robes that was used in a production number back in the 50s. So we have a lot of wonderful history here in this case. 
Heather, Heather you, you, you mentioned that the sash was hand painted back then? It is for a number of years, it actually was hand painted, hand stenciled. So when you go to put this on a body form, you really have to be careful. And this is not one of those pieces that you're gonna steam the wrinkles out of, you know, you just, because steaming would then destroy the integrity of the paint that's on it. So for many years, even up until 1955, and you'll see with Lee Merriweather's sash, it too was hand painted. Whereas today, of course, they're embroidered and they're much more substantial. So they will last the test of time a lot more than what these will. But this is in really great shape. The, the two is a little flaky uh, down there, but eventually we will actually have this framed under archival glass so that it la actually lays flat and is no longer open to the elements. Now, Heather, you said you do all this research. Are you working alone? Do you have a staff? Do you have anybody at all assisting you? Well, we talk about when we when we talk about uh, we, it is sort of the royal eye, right? So we have a team of volunteers that certainly help us. When it comes to the Miss America collection, uh, my husband and I, and we do have a couple of other people who are Miss America aficionados and volunteers that do help us, but. It's a pretty small, tight core group. Now with Rosemary Clooney and the White Christmas Collection, we have other volunteers that are equally as passionate about that subject. So we have a different set of people for different subject matters that help us out. But when it comes to making contact uh, with a Miss America, it's usually my husband and I that do that because it is a little bit like the military. So, you know, veterans like to talk to veterans. Miss Americas like to talk to Miss America. So that that sort of runs consistent. <laughs> Have you ever uh, contacted somebody and they were uh, to totally taken aback that you would be calling them? Oh, that does happen uh, quite often. And I will tell you that um, as a Miss America, I use that title um, to get in avenues and places that normally you may not be able to get. I will say this. When you send an email or you leave a voicemail message and you introduce yourself as Miss America, that usually elicits a return response pretty quick, I will say. And especially in emails, I always put in the subject line, Miss America 2000 needs your help. Like who's not going to return that email, right? They're going to open that email. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So, when, so we're going to go on over to this side of the room. Now, in the room, you've seen before, we did keep Rosemary's piano in here. This is a piano she had in her personal home. It was at Paramount Studios in the bungalow. And this maintains its spot right here in the White Christmas Room. And Bing Crosby and Bob Hope have all played on this piano. So we've now added a few more pieces with a Miss America sash. And you'll see throughout the years, the Miss America logo has changed. So 100 years certainly elicits a lot of changes within the organization, especially with logos. But what you'll see on the piano, we got a Miss America uh, uh, Volvo watch. And it used to be back in the 50s and 60s, we monetized Miss America in a pretty fantastic fashion. We had toy airplanes, lunch boxes, jewelry, cocktail dress lines. It was one of those really substantial titles um, that really people just, they love to buy and purchase merchandise with the Miss America logo on it. Whereas now, of course, we have a lot more competition. So it's not as easy to monetize the title of Miss America as far as merchandise goes. And, and who's Tierra? Yes, Who? and this actually is not, it is a Miss America tiara, but it was never owned by or crowned a Miss America. This one was made as a replica to showcase. And so it was donated to us to have on hand as a replica of the Miss America crown. And you'll see at the end, I'll show you my Miss America crown. It looks a little bit different than this crown. So over the years, not only has the logo changed, but the crown has changed as well, certainly. Uh, before we leave there, I, I saw you have a photo there of uh, Burt Parks. Yes, that is the album of the There She Is Miss America song. And of course has Burt Parks face on it. Bernie Wayne actually wrote that piece of music. And what's interesting about the history, he wrote the song and the Miss America staff at the time turned that song down. And he was actually at his apartment in New York and was playing for his own little cocktail party. It was a small intimate gathering. And he started playing and singing the There She Is song. And everyone hushed in the room. 
And a couple of the women teared up. And after he got done playing the song, a gentleman came up to him and said, who wrote that song and why did they write it? And he told the story how he had actually written it and presented it to the Miss America board, but they turned it down. And the gentleman who was talking to him said, well, they're not going to turn it down anymore because I'm the financier for Miss America this year. And that's going to be the official song. So thus, there she is, was born. And just, can you give us like 30 seconds of your, um, you've done so much research, but something about Burt Parks. We we saw him on TV for decades, but we don't know anything about Burt Parks. You know, Burt Parks is one of those entities. He actually was not the first to sing There She Is. It actually predated him, but Burt Parks made that song famous. And a lot of people think that he's the one that actually wrote the song, but it actually was Bernie Wayne. And Burt Parks actually, years later, after he made his, his first appearance, was let go of the official MC and singer of There She Is, but he was brought back during the 75th anniversary before he passed away and made his last and final appearance in the 90s, and he got a chance to sing There She Is one more time. Very well, thank you. Absolutely. And behind us, you'll see a really substantial dress. Now, there are two types of gowns that you wear as Miss America. You have your competition gown that you're crowned in, and then you have your coronation gown, which actually is your the year you return to crown your successor. B.B. Shop, who is now our oldest living Miss America, uh, B.B. was Miss America in 1948. And B.B. is like six feet tall. She is our matriarch general of the Miss Americas, who definitely keeps us all in line on the straight and narrow path, no doubt. But BB wore this to crown her successor and it has this wonderful hand laid set of flowers. It's a very Southern bell looking dress. It has a huge hoop skirt sewn in the dress. It's extremely heavy. You and can see I that and Gone with the Wind. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it actually stays, the last time we had this up, it had actually deteriorated a little bit. So we have a little bit of restoration work to do on it and it actually stays on this mannequin. We no longer take it on and off because that increases sort of the wear and tear of the materials. But this is an extremely heavy gown. And if it were outside the case, would actually take up probably the full diameter of the center of this room. It's very, very large. And what year was that? She was 1948 which is pretty outstanding, right? I mean, it is, she's still doing so much work. She traveled to Afghanistan to visit the troops just a few years ago. They love, love, love to see her. And when she introduced herself, she said, you may not remember me or know me, but your grandfather certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> One of the really fantastic things about having this at the Rosemary Clooney House is that there is a really great connection from the Clooney family to Miss America that people don't know. So Nina Clooney, who is Georgia's mother and Rosemary's daughter, uh, sister-in-law, was actually Miss Lexington, and she was first runner-up at Miss Kentucky. So she competed in the Miss America system. And what's interesting is Nick Clooney, Rosemary's brother, was actually the MC that year for Miss Kentucky. And he oftentimes tells the story that if Nina had won Miss Kentucky, he wasn't gonna ask her out, but she got first runner up. So we can thank the Miss America organization for George <laughs> Clooney being born in the universe. So we have that to claim to fame as well, which is really great. But Rosemary also was on an album that Nancy Fleming, uh, Miss America 1961 was on called Miss America Presents. And she actually is the first title on the album singing tenderly. And I think just about every Miss America in history gets gifted at least one of these albums that people find at a antique store or a vintage store. And we actually happen to have a couple in our collection here at the museum, which is really fantastic. Um, and then behind us, we have Evelyn A. She was Miss America in 1954. Evelyn A. was the last year of non-televised Miss America pageants. She would later go on to crown Lee Merriweather, who we will see in a hot second. Lee Merriweather went on to be Catwoman, was in Barnaby Jones. She had a pretty illustrious Hollywood film and television career. But she and Evelyn became best friends. They traveled all over the world together um, in this like little Miss America group, which I really love those stories. But here we have Evelyn A's competition gown, which is in excellent condition. 
It's a tool netting and it has hand set, hand sewn sequins. Um, they're iridescent and silver and uh, pave rhinestones throughout the bodice of the dress and on the neckline. Then onto the side, we have a gown. It's an Everglaze gown. So Miss America for a couple of decades did appearances for a company that produced Everglaze cotton. And they traveled all over the world doing presentations on behalf of this company. And each Miss America got one or sometimes a set of Everglaze made gowns to wear. And Evelyn actually wore this for a program book shoot for the year she came back to Crown. And they're really very unique. They're very well made. They actually have been very well preserved. And just about every Miss America that did the tours for Everglaze still has uh, her gown. Uh, behind her is actually a red, white, and blue row. What's really fun, in the old days, they used to do these huge production numbers, which I truly would like to see come back to the pageant. But they used to bring all the returning Miss Americas back on stage and do production numbers. And at this pageant, which was 1960, they actually gave each Miss America a red, white, and blue robe to wear during the production number. And this one actually has a tag in it that says, a special made for Evelyn A by Grace. Grace was a clothing line that made outfits for Miss America. There was also one called Patrice for Miss America. So we had a long history of having specially made pieces for our returning Miss America. So I think this year we should all have red, white, and blue robes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of returning Miss Americas, we have a question from the audience. Do you yes. know how many living Miss Americas we still have with us today? I'm going to take an educated guess um, that we have around 56, 57 living Miss Americas. And what's really great is that this year at Miss America, we will have 33 returning for the telecast, which will be on Peacock uh, stream live, which is really great because it'll be the first time that Miss America will be able to see globally, so around the world, and also will be streamed live. So the people on the West Coast and the East Coast will see it at the same time instead of having a delayed pageant. So we're really excited about the flexibility of NBC's Peacock that will allow us to showcase more of what Miss America is and those 33 returning sisters. So we're really excited, especially since it's so close to Christmas and the holidays, which makes it a little more difficult to travel versus when it's in September, but we're really excited to be the Mohegan Sun. And the final night competition is on December 16th. Awesome. And what date is it going to be aired? The 16th? December 16th, yes, mm -hmm. on NBC's Peacock. So if anybody has any questions, all you have to do is go uh, and download Peacock. It's a free app. It's owned by NBC, and MGM will be producing the Miss America pageant this year. So we're really excited about those awesome possibilities of what the streaming service is going to do to elevate Miss America into the 21st century, and especially for younger audiences who are used to doing that. Um, so behind us, you may be wondering, what in the world is this costume? We actually, we had traveled the White Christmas Collection to Oshkosh, um, Wisconsin, to the Oshkosh Public Museum. But right after we installed it in the museum, we were actually able to get another dancer costume. This is the dance costume from the Mandy scene of White Christmas. And this one actually belonged to Joan Larkin. But what is really interesting is it was repurposed in an Elvis Presley movie called... Um, roused about and actually was worn by a dancer by the name of Hanson. So we were actually able for the first time while White Christmas travels to have a piece of White Christmas still here at the museum. And of course it's Danny by its cake and its vintage uh, lobby poster. So we wanted to make sure that people understood the connection of White Christmas still here at the house. So that has been really great for people to be able to see. Um, over here in this case, this is Lee Merriweather's case with another surprise Miss America, Linda Lee Mead. Lee Merriweather was Miss America 1955. She was the first televised Miss America, which meant she was the entree into television and film for most of the Miss America. She went on to have a wonderful career as Catwoman. In fact, her Catwoman suit just went up for auction last year and went for $60,000 we did not get that one in the collection, but we were able to purchase her Star Trek costume. So for all you Trekkie fans out there, she actually was um, Empress Lazira in an episode of Star Trek. 
and look at how just fantastic this costume is. Very va va boom, certainly for its time. And of course, Lee Merriweather, who is still with us today, lives in California. She has traveled her whole life, not only doing television and film, but also having a wonderful career on stage, which I truly think is probably some of her favorite. This is her original sash and her original trophy. Her trophy is in excellent condition. It had been in a glass case for most of its life. So it really was protected from the elements. So we had zero work to do with this particular trophy. Now, the dress that you see off to the side, at the very last minute, we were able to get a hold of Linda Lee Mead, who was Miss America 1959. She was the second Miss Mississippi to win Miss America. She actually was crowned by another Miss Mississippi, who most of you all know, Mary Ann Moberly. She actually married Gary Collins. And for many years in the 80s, they were actually the co-host of Miss America. And this particular dress of Linda Lee Mead was actually a production of her dress during her returning year as Miss America. Tragically, her crown, her trophy, her gown, and most of her Miss America artifacts were lost when her house caught fire in the 80s. And she said her husband arrived home after hearing their house was on fire. He's a surgeon. He arrived home from the hospital in time to see her trophy falling through the second floor of their house. So we lost a lot of her artifacts, but she had this particular production dress at another facility. So she just sent this to us. And in this production number, she actually dances with members of the New York City Ballet who did the production number that year. And she actually represented the top of the Miss America trophy. So when you look at Lee Merriweather's trophy, you have to imagine that the entire set in Atlantic City was this trophy. And she was actually the top statuette, the victory um, angel at the top. And then she comes down off the set and then she dances the rest of production number with one of the members of the New York City Ballet. So pretty fantastic. Talk about a production number. Like I want to be a production number like that. <laughs> I have to tell you, your brother is doing an exceptional job focusing in on these gowns. He, you know what? He's a professional, which is awesome. I mean, I'm pretty lucky to have someone who's so IT coordinated, certainly. <laughs> so we're going to walk to another room. So the last time we did this tour, you know, we just had this room. So I'm going to have Jameson follow us and we're going to go to the back room. Now, what's really exciting about where we're going is that there are three, or actually four cases full of Miss America memorabilia back here. Normally this houses, here come the girls, the stars are singing and red garters for Rosemary. But what we have in here starts in our sixties. We have Von Decay Van Dyke. Von Decay was Miss America in 1965. Vonda was able to donate a huge collection. So we actually have two cases of Von Decay's, and we actually have more than we can even showcase. But what we've got in these two cases is pretty spectacular. Over here, again, as I mentioned in the other room, Everglaze was still a sponsor in 1965 and produced this wonderful beaded gown uh, for Von Decay. She traveled all over the world, most notably in Japan, to show off Everglaze cotton. And we've got wonderful photographs of her gripping and grinning and doing autograph signings and doing fashion shows in Everglaze fashions. We also have some of her other artifacts. Um, she actually was Arizona's junior miss before she was Miss Arizona. And the funny FYI about that is she competed with Diane Sawyer, who is a Kentucky gal, of course, who is the most awesome anchor woman ever has lived, I believe. And she actually was America's junior miss years later, but her sister, Linda, was actually, um, was actually Junior Miss when uh, Vonda competed in Junior Miss, but then would later go on to win Miss Kentucky and Vonda was Miss Arizona and then Vonda beat her out at Miss America. So it is, you know, the pageant world is a pretty small world. So you see some of these young ladies sort of rotating and competing with each other several times and you still see that a bit today, but we've got some of her Junior Miss trophies. We've got keys to cities. Um, in those days, um, General Motors Oldsmobile was a huge sponsor and Miss Americas would travel all over the country showing off the latest automobiles. And Vonda even had her own Miss America checks. I think I'm the most envious because 
I did not have Miss America checks that had my picture on it. Can you imagine writing a check and giving that to someone? Do you think they would cash that? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think they probably kept a few of those myself. And then on over here, we got one of our mini sashes that again showcases the different fonts. This is a 1960s, 70s um, showcase sash, which was used for display purposes only. It never really crowned in Miss America, but was used for display purposes. And then over here, we have a wonderful case that has Vonda Kay's crowning gown and her original sash. And again, you can see this is, again, a hand-painted sash. So really, even throughout the 60s, we had this hand artwork on these Miss America sashes that later would then transition into embroidered sashes. This gown is a silk taffeta gown. It is in immaculate condition. It's a faux paneled hand beaded gown, all the beading still intact, really not any restoration work needed on this particular gown. It is quite heavy. We also have, which is a little creepy maybe for people watching, you see this dummy sitting over here to the side. His name is Curly. Vonda was a ventriloquist for her talent when she won Miss America and would later go on to have a pretty wonderful career for the next 25 years after her tour as Miss America as a performer. She was on every major talk and entertainment show at the time. She put out like six albums. She wrote music. She put out multiple books. And so Curly traveled with her for a time. And Curly was actually made by the famous dummy creator, Frank Marshall. And what's interesting, when we were doing the appraisal for this particular dummy, um, we couldn't find where Frank would have signed his name. And then we had an appraiser helping us to locate Frank's signature. And Frank's signature actually happens to be in the back of the skull of the dummy. So literally you have to open its mouth and look inside with a flashlight, which is equally as creepy. <laughs> 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 and some of her other trophies down here, Vonda, who again is a wonderful representation of what Miss America is, is still in our hundred year history, the only Miss America to also win Miss Congeniality. And I would say, I'm, I don't think we had a Miss Congeniality my year, but, you know, I was pretty nice too. And, you know, people always say, well, why didn't you win Miss Congeniality? Well, you know, only one can win that title of Miss Congeniality and there are over 50 young women that compete. So we oftentimes tell Vonda that she's the nicest of all the Miss Americas because she has the trophy to prove that. <laughs> So as we transition over, we're going to skip to the 70s and go into well into the 90s. So this case right here represents a lot of hard work in getting some of my sisters to loan or donate us um, their items. So I'm going to move this little stanchion out of the way. And we're going to start with Dorothy Benham, Miss America 1977. Dorothy is an opera singer. She still sings today. She is a phenomenal voice and talent. This is her crowning competition gown, a red sequin gown, and it has a little bit of restoration work uh, left to do, but it's a very simple, very elegant gown, but right behind it is actually her ivory talent gown. And again, she was an opera singer and her voice has not aged at all. So if you ever get a chance to hear Dorothy Benham, she performs all over the country, please do. She actually has a new and interesting book out called The Bastard Queen. And so I urge everyone to go on Amazon and buy or Barnes and Noble and buy this book because it talks about her very interesting family history of how she came to be. So I'm not going to destroy the plot of the book or any of the tidbits, you're going to have to get it yourself. It's called The Bastard Queen. Yes, you heard it correctly. <laughs> Heather, Heather, is there a uh, Miss America book that you would recommend? As far as a book that tells the total history of Miss America? Yes. We do have a couple that came out this year, and there's one called There She Was, and it talks a lot about the inside story of some of the Miss Americas and some of the transitions throughout history. So I think that one is really nice. Also, there's another one from the called Here She Is, and that one is by Pamela Eldred, who was Miss America 
her daughter, Hillary um, Friedman Levy, who just wrote a book as well. And that one is equally as good. And those both came out uh, this year. So I would say if you want something that's more current, that does provide a lot of insight, those two books would be really great to read. And you haven't put together a coffee table book of some sort to, um, yeah, you are, you're ahead of me already, uh, to, to, <laughs> well, celebrate, are, to celebrate the exhibit. Well, we are, because we're continuing to add pieces, um, we have started collecting information, certainly, but I don't feel like our collection is um, complete yet. So once where I feel like it's complete enough, then we'll put together, I think, a book. But you can't actually go, if you're interested in the whole 100-year history of Miss America, the Miss America organization does have a wonderful book. It's a paperback book, so it's easy to pick up and read. And it's chock full of interesting pictures and detail. And you can order that through the Miss America website. So it's 100 years of Miss America history. And that's still available to purchase. We make a great Christmas present. Okay, big question. Yeah. What is yes. your holy grail? What is it that you feel is missing that you would love to have in your collection? Oh, wow. I mean, there are, there are quite a few pieces, and that's a really great question. You know, the Miss America crown, as I have mentioned, has, has transitioned over time. And we have the crown as it is now, which, of course, we have mine, we have the replica, but we don't have the original crown as like Marion Bergeron was crowned with, which actually is a bit looped. It's almost a tiara, not a crown. The Miss America office has replicas of those, but we don't have anything original as far as a crown that dates back that far. So that would be probably my number one on my bucket list, certainly. And then number two would be, um, there are some items still left from some of my Miss America sisters in the 20s that we would love to be able to put in the collection. We do know one cocktail dress that is, uh, has survived and I have been in contact with the granddaughter, but it is actually undergoing some restoration uh, currently. And so we're hoping in the future that as this collection potentially travels to other museums, we'll be able to add a piece from the 20s in because ideally you'd wanna have something from every decade. And that's what we're really trying to do here to be able to show the different transitions through the decades. And we're almost there, but we're missing um, an article of clothing or artifact from the 20s, which we've got a photo that you'll see at the end of our presentation of Margaret Gorman, which is pretty old. Um, and she's our original Miss America from 1921, but we don't have an article of clothing. So, you know, we're really kind of still searching for that. There's also the illustrious mermaid trophy that is out there. The Miss America office does have one of those, but we know that there's another one that has survived that we do know there's a collector that has one. So, you know, you're always searching just like with Rosemary's collections. We scour the internet, we go through auctions, you know, it's really heartbreaking when you find out that like in 2015, Norma Smallwood, her trophy was auctioned off, but that was before we had started collecting artifacts. So we're really mm -hmm. trying to do our due diligence and doing a lot of investigative research to try to find what has been sold, where it went, to see if we can get it back in this collection. Okay, so between Miss America and Rosemary Clooney, where do you get spare time? Well, we don't really have a lot of spare time. You know, it's so funny when people always say, if you want something done, give it to a busy person, right? Um, yeah. I just was born, and as with most of my family members, we just love projects. And even during my Miss America interview on stage with Marie Osmond, I said that I was a jack of all trades, right? And she said, well, you know, sometimes people say a jack of all trades. Um, but not a master really of anything. But I said, no, I'm a jack of all trades, master of many. I mean, I really love doing projects, doing something from uh, the first onset to completion. And that's what I feel that these projects are. And this is really a passion project, right? It's not a, it doesn't have a high, it has a high monetary value in its value alone. But as far as me, that's, what, that's not what I'm interested in as far as like salary or payment or anything. This is a volunteer opportunity for me to be able to give back for historic preservation. Great job. Okay, well, I interrupted so you enough. 
Well, and I do want to share with you too, one of our newer pieces. This is Kyleen Barker, Miss America 1979. She is one of our few gymnasts who won Miss America. Um, she and Judy Ford, um, uh, Judy actually was a trampolinist, but this is Kyleen's talent costume. It is an excellent condition for a stretch fabric. It's very thick and it really has been very well preserved. The elastic in it still has all of its elasticity. So it is still in excellent condition. Um, behind her is a really, um, a blush pink gown. This is Susan Powell, Miss America 1981. Susan is a phenomenal opera singer. She would later go on to have a show called Home Matters, which was predated HGTV. And she was on for something like nine seasons. She did a phenomenal job. This actually was her Miss Oklahoma gown. But what's interesting is when she won Miss America, she had a white uh, gown on that had sheer sleeves and was bedazzled with um, rhinestones. But she said it was so uncomfortable that as soon as she won and was taken backstage before she did press photos, she changed out of it and put on this blush pink Miss Oklahoma gown. So a lot of her official photos as Miss America are actually in this gown. And FYI, she still fits into this gown, which is pretty phenomenal, right? Miss America 1981, pretty great. She would later go on to crown Elizabeth Ward Grayson. Elizabeth actually um, being from Arkansas, this was her swimsuit from her competition days. And what's so great is when you get all of these gowns, and you look on the inside, just as my things were, all of their state, uh, their state and their names are all throughout the garments. Because when you're backstage at Miss America, you got clothes flying everywhere, right? So they tell you that you have to tag everything. Even the backs of earrings have tape on them with your state name on them or your state title. And so Elizabeth's bathing suit has uh, not only her name, but her state as well, kind of throughout it in different, in different pieces or parts. Um, behind it is her beautiful emerald green polyester talent gown. Now, of course, this is a polyester synthetic fabric. So this actually is gonna stand the test of time. This hasn't aged a day. It's never going to fade um, unless you put it in a window, which we're never going to do certainly, but polyester withstands a lot of the elements. And this was her talent presentation gown, beautiful with the, the drapes on either side. And then over here, oh, I got, I, I almost missed like one of our prize pieces because I don't think ever before has Vanessa Williams loaned out a piece of her Miss America collection, but we were able to graciously get Vanessa's Miss New York trophy. She was Miss New York 1983 and then later went on to become Miss America 1984 and she sent us her Miss New York trophy. So we were really excited because she just came back into the Miss America family as an uh, active Miss America just a few years ago. And she has really become a super Miss America sister. She is someone that has had such a wonderful career. And I got a chance to see her perform in Louisville. And I got a chance to give her a little crown ornament, which is really great. So she really appreciated that. So we appreciate her being a part of this exhibit. Uh, a little FYI, though. Her Miss America gown, which was that beautiful lavender gown with the big sort of tulle tuff, and it was a mermaid gown, all fully beaded lavender. It actually was stolen the day, or like right after she won. As soon as she took it off, she said that was the last time she'd ever seen it. So if anyone out there sees a lavender gown that looks like Vanessa Williams, it probably is. So give me a call if you find, you find it. <laughs> Over here is my quintessential Miss America. Every Miss America has their favorite Miss America. Someone that you've looked up to, that you've idolized, that when you saw crown just was the epitome of everything you wanted to be. And for me, that person is Debbie Turner. She was Miss America in 1990. And I still get chills talking about her because we've shown some of her items before. We've actually shown her talent outfit, which is a two-piece pant outfit. We've also shown her coronation gown, but today this is her crowning competition gown. It was made by the wonderful designer, Stephen Urich, who still designs pageant uh, wear today. And this is actually a silk velvet on top with a silk crepe skirt. 
It is all hand beaded. It is one of the most exquisite gowns. It is a little aged uh, right now, but on, you know, in real time during her competition, it was bright white, but she just epitomized what Miss America was to me. And she now has a wonderful book out called Courageous Faith. So if you want real an inside faith-based look at a Miss America, you definitely want to buy um, Debbie Turner's book and it is available online as well. And it's called Courageous Faith. But again, she's my favorite Miss America. Over here, we round out to 2000 and 2009. And of course, behind me, Sal, we have my Miss America gown. So what was really great about buying wardrobe for Miss America, a lot of people may not know, you're a starving college kid, basically, when you win your state title, right? I mean, you're competing because you need scholarship money. And so the state organizations all over the country raise money throughout the year to purchase your wardrobe. Now, of course, some states have a little more money than others. Miss Kentucky always does an outstanding job with getting sponsors for wardrobing. And I went to Miss America with, gosh, probably a $12,000 wardrobe. And this particular gown, which is a hand dyed umbre silk, Sherry Hill actually made that. She's one of our uh, premier pageant uh, gown designers. You have really like Sherry Hill, Tony Bowles, uh, Juan Carlos, Stephen Urich. Um, there are quite a few that just specialize in pageant evening wear. And this one actually was purchased for me uh, through the Miss Kentucky board by my hairdresser, Mickey, who still has a wonderful, he's responsible for my short haircut, like the winning Miss America hair. And he actually purchased this as a board member for me for uh, Miss America. Over here, we've got uh, Katie Stam. She was Miss America uh, 2009. And she is, she is the only Miss America from Indiana. So she and I have that same aspect um, in common. I'm the only Miss Kentucky to win Miss America and she's the only Miss Indiana to win Miss America. She actually was here two nights ago doing a wonderful soft unveiling of our exhibit. This is a very heavy beaded lace gown designed by Tony Bowles for her. She had modeled for Tony Bowles for several years. And I think this is probably one of the first times, aside from the Miss America collection at the Sheraton Hotel in Atlantic City, that it's been on display. And uh, we had to find a special mannequin just for it so she, it would fit because she was really super tiny and still is certainly, but she is now works for an agricultural company. She's a brand expert and uh, really does a lot with communications and has three wonderful children. And she is one of my dearest friends. So we were really excited that she could be here with me to help kick this off. Um, some of the other items within this case, you've got my Miss America trophy. So remember you saw Joe Carroll's trophy, which was like three and a half feet tall. Yeah, mine's not three and a half feet tall. It is pretty, but it's like a foot and a half tall or even, yeah, it's probably like 13 or 14 inches. Uh, behind it is a Waterford Crystal beautiful piece. I still am the only Miss America to be given the Woman of Achievement Award. That award uh, was presented by Waterford Crystal for many years to celebrities that worked on behalf of the Miss America's platform. But my platform was, uh, was pretty unique. I worked on behalf of homeless veterans. And at the time in 99, 2000, we really didn't have many celebrities or really any celebrities working in that arena. We had some working on behalf of the World War II Memorial Foundation, like Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, but there were really no notable women other than me working on behalf of homeless veterans. And now you've got a lot of particular celebrities that actually help raise awareness, but the Water for Crystal Woman Achievement Award surprisingly was given to me. And if you ever watch my pageant, you'll see just how surprised I was when they introduced me on stage and they gave me that award. And it came with a $25,000 grant to go to a homeless veteran organization. So that was pretty fantastic. You also have in the crown box below my very first tiara, which I won here in Augusta as Miss Augusta Sternwheel Regatta. It's a tiara and it's still in pretty good condition. I won it at age 10, was the first pageant I ever won in my, in my career. And then below it is my official Miss Kentucky crown. So as you can see, when you, when you see the Miss Kentucky crown and then you see my Miss America crown, they do resemble each other. 
but the preliminary crowns are a little small. And then you go to the state crown, which gets a little bigger. And then of course, the Miss America crown is substantially bigger than all of the rest of them. And rightfully so, certainly. You know, Heather, we're just, uh, we're getting a little tight here on time. I know, but, right? I, but, but there's something I have to uh, mention. You say things off the top of your head that are so intriguing. And I, I have to ask you to come back again because I would love to do a program with you. You can sit down with a cup of tea at your table. And all I want to know is the process from a young kid, like you said, in high school, going through the process and what it entails. When you said that everything is labeled, uh, all the costumes are labeled, those are the things I would love to know. What actually goes on? We see in front of the camera, what's going on back there? You've got 50 young women. It's got to be insane. And I would love to know the backstory of what's going on behind the scenes at Miss America. I tell you what, sometimes it's a hot mess, right? Knowing how the sausage is made. But, you know, perhaps we could do that. Actually, it would be fun to do that either at Miss America one year. Maybe next year at Miss America, we should set up a show where you get a chance not only to talk to me, but maybe some of my other sisters as well, because we all have such unique stories to tell about our journey. And the behind the scenes for me was different from maybe behind the scenes for somebody else. But at the pageant itself, it is chaos personified, right? But we do have wonderful hostesses in the hostess committee that really help to keep everything tight and concise. And so you have volunteers that really help to make sure that things stay a bit organized. So I know we're tight on time, but I just want to I just want to walk yeah, into our last tough. room real quick because I want to end up with two uh, very special pieces. This is our USO cabinet because Miss America has long been a military advocate and for many, many years traveled with USO to do tours at military bases, not only in the United States, but all across the world. And I actually brought in some of my Miss Kentucky sisters, Janet uh, Loman Hat or Janet Hatfield Loman, who actually did USO tours with Judy Ford. And they were one of the last US shows in Vietnam. So they actually went into combat theater and did USO shows. And then uh, several of my Miss Kentucky sisters trophies, because not only is it important to showcase Miss Americas, but the state title holders, you know, there's more of them than there are of us. And they are still very active within the organization. And again, lots of military advocacy. And of course, at the very end, we wind up with Margaret Gorman, our original Miss America from 1921. And then down to my Millennium Miss America crown. So I know I've showed this in the past, but mine is 24 karat gold with uh, rubies. It actually, to highlight the Millennium crowning, it's different from any other Miss America crown, which makes it pretty special. And we actually weren't crowned with sashes. And so Katie Stan, who I mentioned before, actually gifted me retroactively a sash that matched my crown. So that was pretty spectacular. I do not wear it to bed. I do not wear it cleaning from the house, <laughs> but I have tried it on for a photo a time or two. Okay. Be honest. At night, when everything is closed up, you go through the exhibit and say, hey, I want to try this one on. Let me try this one on. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because people all the time ask me, do you ever wear the crown? And I say, gosh, I didn't even wear the crown much during my Miss America year because I was doing so much advocacy work in Washington, D.C. that sometimes when you put the crown on, people lose all sense of reality. Like it's almost like you become Cinderella at Disney and they just goo goo and gaga over the crown. So sometimes your message gets a little lost. And so I wound up trying the crown on lots of people so they could too could experience what it was like to wear a Miss America crown. And just here two nights ago, Katie Stam actually said, you know, I've never got a chance to try your crown on. So I have a wonderful picture of me placing my crown on her head. And that was really a delightful moment. Heather, how long is the exhibit going to be at your uh, at the uh, Rosemary Clooney house? The exhibit will be here through February, really until the White Christmas collection comes back. So the end of January for sure, but we probably won't transition those two exhibits um, until February. So if you give us a call, you're down in this area, 
We're open on Saturdays or by appointment only during our winter hours because it does get a little cold down here on the river, but definitely give us a call. Our number is online or on our Facebook page. We would love to see you here at Rosemary's to help celebrate the 100th anniversary of Miss America. Sounds great. Now, uh, John, did you get any of those books? I think I got all of them. Okay, let's see what you found. Uh, so yeah, let's see. I'm going to share my screen and we can take a look at a few of the links that we are going to be sending in the follow-up email. So everyone should be able to see the Rosemary Clooney House website. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, excellent. So we're going to share that. Everyone, please take a look at that. And I really want to draw your attention. If you click here on shop, it is going to take you to there is uh, artwork, there are ornaments, perfect for Christmas time. And it also looks like coincidentally, uh, Zazzle is running a sale today. So <laughs> hop on over there, support Heather French Henry, Rosemary Clooney House, the 100th anniversary of Miss America exhibit, buy some of this stuff, hang it on your Christmas tree. Uh, as far as the books we have, uh, I so I got Bastard Queen by Dorothy Benham, uh, going behind the scenes of her family, uh, here she is by Hilary Levy Friedman, and there she was by Amy Argetsinger, uh, and also Courageous Faith by Debbie Turner Bell. So we have those, and all of those will be included in the follow-up email if you would like to purchase one of the books, uh, read into the history of Miss America or the history of one of these particular Miss America winners. I also, I found on missamerica.org, they have a, an article on the present, uh, how they're going to be presenting this on Peacock. So if you would like to stream the 2021 Miss America pageant on CBS's Peacock app, I'm going to include this in the email as well. So this will have the information for you. And as always, SouthStGeorge.com, you can see what we've done and what we will be doing. You can follow us on Facebook and keep in touch that way. Sal just crossed, oh my gosh, 15 1500 followers on Twitter. So definitely follow Sal on Twitter where you're going to get a couple of updates a day. Very active. Uh, we are on Instagram, but it seems like Instagram's having a bit of a problem. So <laughs> you'll, you'll see that. And this virtual road trip, as well as the others are going to be up on our YouTube page, as well as the playlists with uh, clips and lots of related information. So definitely check that out as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a very, very full follow-up email. <laughs> okay. Heather, as always, what, what a treat this has been. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. And I want to take you up on that idea. Uh, get a bunch of, uh, get a group of your friends and we'll sit around the coffee table. We'll have tea and we'll talk about what it's like behind the scenes. That's really where I want to be. I think that sounds like a fabulous podcast. Maybe you should come and do that in person. Sounds good. Hey, you're right around the corner from me. Uh, when you get to uh, Mohegan Sun, you're a ferry ride away from my uh, my house. I know. Come on yeah. down to Uncasville, Connecticut. It's going to be a great time. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Heather. And um, bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, your brother. What a great job he did today. I can't. I can't say enough. Thank you. I appreciate that. He's smiling. <laughs> Good. Have a great day. Merry Christmas, Heather. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays and have a happy new year. May 2022 be much more fulfilling than what we've been through the last two years. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Be well. Hey, if it wasn't for the pandemic, you and I would have never met. That is true. There's a silver lining to every cloud. That's true. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you again. Have a great day.